So my name is Jihan Abazovic, and uh, believe me or not, I'm emergency medicine and traumatologist, but last uh, 10 years I'm working in the field of regenerative uh, medicine, trying to apply, uh, first of all, blood products, then after that, from 2013, uh, stem cells in a lot of different fields uh, in medicine. So aesthetic is uh, one of my fo favorite. Unfortunately, in the last couple of years, I'm not so dedicated to that. Uh, but uh, I hope that with conferences like this, I will be back. So just a short announcement. So when we are talking about cell therapies, you can see that first definition, which you can find as a real definition, uh, are from 1993. So this was for, for all of us here pretty, pretty long time ago. And uh, this was for the cell therapies. And we, uh, when we are talking about regenerative medicine, uh, the first mentioned definition was in uh, uh, 2000, uh, 2003. So these are things uh, we are talking about. They are uh, more than 20, 20 years old, but they are still developing. Uh, most common used um, uh, components or, uh, or substrates in uh, all of the medical field are autologous components. This is a with one very easy explanation, autologous components are totally neutral to the body, so we have uh, much less, actually, we don't have contra contraindication. The contraindication with autologous component can be just that contraindication which are, uh, which are provided by technique of, uh, of applying them. So we are, uh, today we are mostly using autologous component. Uh, first of all, we have blood components, so uh, Dr. Jasmine before uh, me talk, uh, talk a little bit about uh, platelet-rich plasma. We also have a product which is called platelet-leukocyte-rich plasma when we are increasing with the purpose number of leukocytes are pro as pro-inflammatory cells, and this therapy in aesthetics have, um, uh, let's say, better or more enforced results in treating of uh, scars. Uh, also, PRP gel, uh, Dr. Jasmine also talked about, uh, about that. Uh, she presented the mechanical way of, uh, of activation the platelets, but there are also some uh, chemical way, uh, which I will explain uh, later on. And bioregenerative fibrin, these are uh, different components of the fibrin. Uh, I mentioned specifically this one because uh, this is uh, w uh, one of uh, my patents when we are able to concentrate the fibrinogen as a protein and not, not to denaturate the structure of them. And we are not using so much this in aesthetics. We are using it uh, uh, more in, in some other fields when we want to, uh, to stop bleeding actually to promote hemostasis. Uh, when we are talking about stem cells, uh, there was a lot of discussion yesterday about stem cells. I want to say from this place uh, to all of you that we are really, if we are talking about autologous components, we are really overusing word stem cells. So all these components, what we are calling today stem cells, we, we can obtain them from the bone marrow. This is bone marrow aspirate concentrate, a number of stem cells in this, different kind of stem cells in this, uh, this substrate. It's less than 30 percent. When we are talking about SVF, we talked a lot yesterday, uh, stromal vascular fraction, uh, the percentage of the stem cells, uh, classif uh, classified stem cells in the stromal vascular uh, fracture is between an, uh, 20 and 30 percent. So products which are actually not stem cells, uh, we are, we are uh, using the word stem cells, but I will explain later on uh, why is this so. Also, we can, uh, we can use uh, uh, circulatory blood. These uh, procedures of taking or obtaining of stem cells in circulatory blood, we are very rarely using in aesthetics because uh, this uh, technique requires to give some medicaments in order to uh, mobilize the stem cells from the bone marrow in circulatory blood and then harvested that. Uh, these uh, medicaments are not so safe medicaments. They have a lot of uh, uh, adverse effects, so we are not, uh, not using them in, in, the, uh, in the, our aesthetic procedure. Oh, I have monitor here. <coughs> and also today very popular, they are uh, allogenic uh, cells. Uh, these are uh, cells from the, from, the, uh, from the umbilical cord. Uh, they are used in some cases uh, let me say, maybe it's the wrong word, but as autologous, since that they don't have antigenic potential and they are playing neutral role in our uh, immune system. 
When we are talking about PRP, first of all, we need to make a, a distinction between serum and plasma. Uh, 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 just for someone to don't get me wrong, whatever we are using, the, there are a lot of proteins, so we will achieve some effect. Even we are using serum or plasma, but when we are using of plasma, we need to know that the main difference between serum and plasma is that uh, uh, plasma uh, contains uh, clotting factor, non-activating clotting fa factor, and uh, uh, serum uh, doesn't. And uh, when we are talking about platelet-rich plasma, I want you all to know that uh, uh, the blood, the blo if you are look taking a look just in the blood, cells uh, composition, you have 93% of the red blood cells, you have uh, around 6% of the white blood cells, and you have just 1 to 2% of platelets. So this is very, very important uh, to know, uh, doesn't matter what system you are using, to know that platelets will be somewhere in the middle uh, after centrifugation if you are using a uh, tubing system. So this part will have very, very few of uh, of platelets. Concentration here can be uh, at most uh, two, two times baseline if you are taking this part. And here they will, they will, you, will, you can also find some platelets, but most of them uh, will, will be here, depending on the centrifugation process, of course. Uh, what is platelet-rich plasma? Uh, I think that you all know that inside the platelet we have all the growing factors which are stimulating uh, various processes in our body. Some of them which are named here are uh, better investigate, but they are 247 uh, cyto uh, cytokines, uh, adipokines, growth factors, uh, and other components which we can find in the platelets. Uh, uh, known, I think that they are, uh, they are more. So uh, these all growth factors can stimulate various processes in, uh, in our body. For example, when we cut our hand, first, uh, first what happened is that uh, uh, our blood came in contact with, uh, with, uh, with the oxygen, the f uh, fibrinogen become fibrin, the platelets are coming there, they are uh, being activating, releasing the growth factor, and you have you have in that area when we when we have our cut, you have proliferation of the of the skin and closing of the wound. <clears throat> this is actually a concept why we are using this in aesthetic that we want some growing factors which we have normally in circulatory blood. First of all, to bring in much higher concentration in our skin, for instance, or subcutaneous layer. Uh, and uh, second thing, we need somehow to activate them. Activation is very, very impro uh, important process of the platelets because if you are giving unactivated, pro uh, unactivated uh, platelets, uh, you have very low or you don't have releasing of growing factor. Uh, activating uh, all, in most of inflammatory processes uh, we can use as activators for platelets. So for that reason we can use microneedling, we can use laser, uh, we can use uh, needling. Needling by itself it can act as an activator. But uh, when, when we are, uh, we can also add something before applying, some component before applying the, uh, the PRP, and this uh, activation can be, uh, again, as Dr. Jasmine explained, mechanical, uh, and can be uh, chemical. So chemical, you can use a uh, lot of different things, but the uh, last, uh, last cascade, what happened, whatever you are using, is activating uh, platelets by thrombin. So thrombin is whatever you are using, you are stimulating some cascade which will bring the uh, thrombin in the, in the system and thrombin will activate the platelets. As you can see on this photo which is from, uh, from my uh, professor, uh, I don't know, if yes, Peter Everts, uh, platelets are round, uh, round cells which are circulatory in the blood. When you activate them, they are releasing this false legs, pseudopodas, and they are bringing the, the, the granulas in the place of, uh, of inflammation, and these granulas are exploding and releasing the gr growing factor. Uh, this is very, very uh, important if you are looking into some very small things. Uh, we have a publication about that when we detect how these granula actually are working. So it's not the same procedure. It's not the same biological procedure when you release growth factor just to release them, or when you activate the platelets to make this all processes of pseudopodas and everything and release them after, uh, afterwards. Uh, 
you know better than me the where can we use the, the platelet rich plasma so I'm not going to stay on this slide what is much more important for me uh, is to give you maybe something what you are not doing in everyday practice so uh, effect of platelet rich plasma injection is directly correlated uh, with the patient's condition for the moment so for that reason in our clinic we are always doing some basic blood analysis so we are doing CBC we are doing CRP, very important thing, because usually our clients are younger people which may have some infection which will uh, decrease the, uh, the potential of this kind of therapy. So we are always measuring this, and in some cases we are finding it uh, higher and the patient doesn't have any, any complaints. And we are doing basic biomechanical uh, uh, parameters. Also, yeah, since that uh, PRP is working as immunological uh, component, uh, please be very aware, especially with the, uh, with the patients, with the female patients which uh, usually have some kind of thyroiditis and they don't know about that. So uh, it happens in a lot of cases that we discovered in our clinic, they came for aesthetic procedure and we discovered that. And the level of vitamin D in older patients, because in this area, I mean, in this area, maybe not so much, but uh, a couple of kilometers <laughs> on the north. Uh, most of the persons who are uh, above 50, they have insufficiency of vitamin D, not deficiency, but insufficiency. So this is very important in, uh, in processes of neoangiogenesis. Vitamin D, D plays the crucial role, and this, I'm not saying that this patient will not have an effect, but the effect may be uh, lower than, uh, than, than we expect. Also very important thing, this is our, uh, our study, this is theoretical approximation of optimal concentration for each tissue. As you can see the skin, the skin needs concentration which is five to seven time baseline and we, where we are talking about pure rejuvenation, you don't need the uh, leukocytes and pro, uh, as pro-inflammatory cells in the substrate. But when we are talking about skin scars, you can see that uh, we need some, uh, some uh, uh, leukocytes. Okay, I'm, I'm easily out of time. Just to confirm this, we did the punch biopsy before and after PRP treatment, and you can see that levels of collagen and elastin, you can see that also with the two-time baseline you have some effect, but with the 16 you have lower effect, with 16 time based time, you have lower effect than with the, with the, <coughs> with the two times baseline. Uh, in our clinic, we are doing strictly quality control, so we are, doing ab uh, we are going above the concentration which we want, and we dilute it with platelet, uh, platelet poor plasma. So, as you can see here, this is mm, uh, around 10 times concentration. And for our patients, just for the, for the clinical studies, we are doing all these. Uh, parameters from the, from the blood and from the substrate which we are giving. We are using it for face rejuvenation. Uh, w w this, is, uh, uh, this is one before and uh, after six months picture. You can, uh, you can see the uh, effect. Uh, our PRP is a little bit reddish. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna, this is the technique how we are doing it. I'm not gonna show the video, but why it is reddish? Because we show that uh, best, uh, younger platelets have much more uh, growth factors inside and uh, they are uh, bigger, so they are heavier and during centrifugation process, they are much closer to, to, uh, to red blood cells. So we are sacrificing some of the red blood cells in order to have, uh, we think, a better quality of, uh, of uh, uh, PRP. So I don't know what happens with. We are using this for acne scars. We are using for buttock region, very good for uh, cell white. I don't know. If, did some of you try it? We are using for hand rejuvenation, hair grow, and uh, uh, we are using O shot and P shot, which we will talk, discuss uh, later on. There is a lecture about that, but I want you to say that I'm now using also stem cells for, very, for some very severe uh, in males erectile dysfunction and in females uh, urinary incontinences. And about stem cells, you all know that they are a couple of uh, uh, types, so they are totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, and, uh, and unipotent. Uh, we have for now most uh, investigated cells are hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells you have a lot in the fat tissue, in the bone marrow you have bone mesenchymal and hematopoietic 
uh, stem cells. <coughs> a very important thing when we are talking about autologous therapy is stem cells niche which help this cell survive and stimulate some of the processes. Just to be clear, uh, when we start to work stem cells a couple of years ago, I mean 20 years ago in, in investigation, uh, we thought that uh, all stem cells will be differentiated to some cell, but this is now uh, totally avoid, uh, 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 avoid theory. Now we know that stem cells are stimulating uh, tissue when you are applying them and uh, act on that tissue like a hormone. So they have paracrine effect and they changing the uh, function of the, of the tissue. So for this uh, stem cell niche is very important. You have a lot of things what stem cells contain, much more than, than uh, platelets, but I will not stay so long about that. I will just uh, go back to what we discussed previously. So <coughs> from the fat we can obtain stem cells uh, but the, we can obtain actually stromal vascular fraction and you are all very familiar with liposuction as a technique so we do liposuction we use some uh, some way mechanical or enzymatic digestion and as an end product we have this stromal vascular fraction which again it's not just stem cells they are stem cells with a lot of other cells and with a lot of other proteins uh, etc etc and i think that this mixture is actually what makes them uh, potent uh, in our cases, we are taking up to 200 milliliters if we are not doing grafting, and the number of total nucleate cells in this uh, is this. Viability is around 80%. If we are talking about uh, bone marrow, we have here hematopoietic plus mesenchymal stem cells, so we have both of them. <coughs> Me personally, for some, for some indication, I see bone marrow as much uh, more potent substrate than stromal vascular fracture. Why? Because in the bone marrow we have also hematopoietic stem cells which are also acting uh, as a paracrine and giving some paracrine effects. But also in the bone marrow we have some uh, specific phenotypes of the cell which we are now investigating which are phylogenetically younger and they have uh, uh, at least in the lab, uh, higher potential for uh, proliferation and regeneration of making tissue proliferated and uh, generated. We are using bone marrow aspirate uh, concentrate for uh, hair growth. This is <coughs> something what we call bone graft. This is one normal augmentation. This is one over augmentation. This result wasn't so good because when you are making physical pressure on the blood vessel, the vascularization of the graft is very poor. But what we are using, we are using uh, fat tissue. We are using spe specifically prepared. We are, using, we are mixing it with PRP, activating it with autologous thrombin, and then uh, <coughs> uh, give it back. Uh, we are, this is how it looks. So this is fat tissue, this is PRP, this is autologous thrombin for activation, and this is very low amount of stem cells from the bone marrow, which we use for one scar on this patient, but this is before and after uh, procedure. And what is our future? These are, we are now working a lot in subcellular therapy. Uh, subcellular, uh, subcellular proteins. So this what I explained that we achieved from the stem cells as uh, s different signals as different, uh, which are acting as a hormones on the tissue when we are applying that. <coughs> uh, they, these are, uh, we call them microvesicles. So in these microvesicles you have a couple of parts. You have uh, exosomes, you have ribosomes, you have mitochondria, you have protein fraction, we contain a lot of uh, inform, uh, informative DNA, DNA and RNA. And we are now trying to do the surface characterization of the exosome and to maybe for a couple of years not to use cells at all, just to use these specific proteins from the cells. <coughs> I'm not going to conclude. I just want uh, to, to thank uh, all my team, which is not so, uh, so small, and uh, to thank you for, for your attention and hope that I will see you very soon here. Thank you, Dr. Dizihan. It was very nice. Ben Dr. Zehra Özbek. Perpe konusunda Dr. Dizihan'a bir sorum olacak. Perepe konusu her zaman beni heyecanlandırıyor. Çok severek yapıyorum bu işlemi. Şöyle bir şey soracağım. Perepe'ye antibiyotik katmamız veya herhangi bir vitamin katmamız sakıncalı olur mu? Görüşünüz nasıl olacak? I will translate. Doktor Zerha, she said she really liked your presentation and she is very how do you say she loves doing PRP and she asked if she had any kind of vitamin or mesotherapy 
to the PRP, uh, does it change anything on the effect and what are your thoughts about it? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm personally, my attitude is that I'm in the, in the same session, I'm not mixing PRP with anything. Uh, if you can mix it, but you have to be aware that small changes can do the big, uh, uh, big disproportion in the substrate itself. So uh, what you need to pay attention is that uh, not to use, for instance, vitamin uh, C mixed with PRP, uh, because it, uh, the, it, the vitamin C is an acid, so it changes the pH and you will have uh, some, some processes which you don't want in that moment. But you can use vitamin C uh, before, before the procedure as an activator, because again, it's an it's a, it's a acid and it will provoke, it will make uh, 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 inflammation of the, of, the, of the surface, and after that you can, you can inject PRP. This is uh, all other things are depending what you are asking, but generally my attitude is not to mix it. You can do it at least one week before and after you can do mesotherapy. And what I'm usually doing, I'm doing PRP first, then after one month uh, I do uh, meso a different kind of mesotherapy, cocktails, vitam vitamin cocktails and so on. I'd like to hear what Dr. Dizihan thinks about that. What, how do you use PRP and if you do for scars, acne scars or any kind of scars? Uh, yes, we are using uh, PRP for scars and we are using also for some uh, after operation of keloids. For instance, uh, what is important uh, when we are using PRP uh, uh, for a scars is that we are increasing the levels of uh, leukocytes. Leukocytes are pro-inflammatory cells, but they are able to, let's say, destroy the uh, scarificate uh, tissue and it, they allow uh, the new tissue to, to ingrow. So uh, we are using them as a simple injection or when we are, uh, when we are talking about acne scars and you need three to five treatments to get very, very amazing results. Uh, but, uh, but also we are using when we are removing, surgically removing the, the, the keloids, we are injecting in the surrounding area, we are injecting this PRP with these performances and in the middle we are using PRP uh, gel, so we have very, very uh, good results with that. Uh, I'm not using PRP for some big scars because it will need a lot of time uh, and a lot of injection. Uh, but also what is maybe interesting, we, we are using um, uh, PRP to recover the burnt person and we have pretty, pretty, uh, I mean together with reconstructive surgery, I didn't bring that photos, but we, we have pretty, pretty good results in that. And about the, the previous question to you, uh, I think that uh, we are not getting fibroblasts, uh, we are not putting fibroblasts there to stay there, but they are modulating all the natural processes of the skin, so you don't have actually just action of the fibroblasts themselves, but they are promoting all the fun uh, function on that skin area, so this is the reason why, uh, why we are actually using that.